question, we're going to cover one of the fundamental questions in economics, what happens to changes in supply and changes in demand. So number 28 reads, new technology is invented for making computer chips. Simultaneously, more uses are discovered for computer chips so that the number of buyers increases. And then it asks what happens to the price and what happens to the quantity. So whenever you start with a supply and demand question, always begin with your graph. A lot of times students want to interpret the question and kind of logically reason, well, if technology increases, I think price will increase. If you do it that way, there's a lot more room for error because it's such a broad statement. If you just stick to how do the curves change on the graph and how do the demand curve change on the graph, you'll usually get the question right. So let's see how our curves change. So remember, supply curve is our upward curving, upward sloping curve. Demand curve is downward sloping. I like to remember D for downward sloping for demand. And remember, we have our price on, our, on this axis, and we have our quantity on this axis. So the first part of the question says that new technology is invented for suppliers. When that happens, it's become easier for suppliers to produce the good. So because it's become easier for suppliers, supply increases. So here I'm going to draw a supply. When it increases, it shifts to the right. And supply will always increase whenever it's become easier to produce. So here, technology increased. If, say, costs go down, then it becomes cheaper to produce, so supply would still shift to the right. If the number of suppliers increases, then you have like more capacity to produce, so in, it would also shift to the right as well. And the second part of the question reads that demand increases because the number of buyers increases. So when demand increases, we're going to shift to the right as well. So here's our new demand. And where those new curves intersect is our new point. So let's see where price is. Here's our price. Here's our quantity. Comparing that with our old equilibrium, here's our original price and here's our original quantity. And as you can see, when both supply and demand increase, we have an increase in supply, in price, sorry, and an increase in quantity. Now, usually we would be done with this question, we would only have to draw one graph, but because it tells us there's two changes, but didn't tell us the magnitude of the change, we have to draw two graphs, and I'll show you why. In this graph, we're going to do the same changes, but there's going to be something different. So we know that supply increases, so I'm going to draw supply increasing. And we also know demand increases, so we're going to have demand increase here. And where is our new point? Here is our new point. So our price is here. Our quantity is about here. Where is that relative to our old point? Here is our price and here is our quantity. Now if you see here, I do the same changes, but price decreased instead. Quantity definitely increases, but we don't know what happens to price. So whenever you have a change occurring with both curves, you have to draw two graphs because you don't know if price is going to increase or decrease, in, but we do know that quantity will increase. So draw two graphs to cover the full range of outcomes that could happen. If they do tell you that supply increases more than demand, so here I drew a large supply change, here I, do a small, I drew a small supply change. So if they told you that supply increased a lot, then you would only have to do one graph, and you do this kind of graph, where supply increases a whole, bu whole much. If they tell you that supply increases only a little bit, then you draw a small change. Here they didn't tell you, so the answer is ambiguous. We don't know, we need to know more information about price, but we know definitely that quantity increases. So whenever you do a supply and demand question, go back to the graph, especially if you're a visual learner, and find where your points are, draw the changes in demand and supply, and find your points. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.